Did you have a good journey? Yeah, not bad. What's that? You've got halal meat to avoid oh, any more possible Oh, Yvonne, I don't, I don't <laughs> want your halal meat. Why Thank not? You. Look, I wouldn't eat it. This is healthier than the meat well, that you eat. It doesn't matter whether it's healthy or not. Do you know how they kill those animals? I, ca I, I wouldn't be able to eat it. It's a very painless no. process. I'm sorry. We'll have a cup of tea. And then we'll talk about it. Mm -hmm. I suppose we're still will, uh, having, having bacon sandwiches as well. Bacon sandwiches are the tastiest thing on oh, this earth. Oh, mother. I'd, I'd, you are what you if eat. I, and if, if you I, saw what pigs ate, you, know, you would last, never touch last, another pork chop again. The last thing your dad had before he died was a bacon sandwich. He walked out into the garden and he... And he dropped, dropped down dead. Dropped down, yeah. Uh -huh. Afghanistan's Taliban regime says it will put the British journalist Yvonne Ridley on trial for entering the country illegally. Worryingly, the Taliban have hinted they might claim she was a spy for Western Special Forces. Today, Yvonne's mother called on the Prime Minister to do more to help her. How many more highs and lows has my daughter Yvonne to endure through her nightmare ordeal? At the Sunday Express, her employers insist she's a bona fide journalist who only entered Afghanistan to report on the humanitarian situation. Fell off a donkey captured by the Taliban, gave them an undertaking that I would study the Quran if they released me, and against all the odds, they released me. She's had so many prayers said for her, and I'm sure it's the power of prayer that's brought about this happy ending. Well, I hope it is a happy ending. I kept my word, read the Quran, read it again read supporting literature, couldn't believe what I was reading because the Quran makes it perfectly clear, crystal clear, that women are equal in spirituality, worth and education. And as a feminist, I found this quite breathtaking. Do you know the last time I was in this church? Dad's funeral. Yes, that's right. Mm -hmm. I spoke in the pulpit. Yes. I think it was probably the first time they've had somebody wearing a hijab in the pulpit. And so have you, have you ruled? No, never. When I sent you an email, because I, I didn't have the guts to tell you to your face that I'd become a Muslim, you said it was a, like a, a death in the family and that's what started you going to church again. Well, it didn't really start me going. But I suppose it made me more, it more important to me to go to church because uh, I had to start, start praying for you because I didn't know what you were doing. She was really very ambitious, always wanted to be a journalist. It wasn't a nine to five, Monday to Friday job. It was midnight, Saturday, Sunday, and it didn't matter whether she was on holiday or whatever, wherever she was. If anything cropped up, she would be there, you know, hungry for news. She was very much on the side of the underdog. If 
to tell you that since 9-11, uh, more than 1,000 brothers and some sisters have been taken into custody. Out of those 1,000 or so that have been taken into custody, about 70 have been charged. And out of those 70 that have been charged, less than half a dozen have actually been convicted under the new terrorism laws. So tonight it's really vitally important to show solidarity with sisters under great stress and I, I really think that uh, this brand of uh, sisterhood makes Western feminism pale into insignificance. I think I have lost her in it one way because most of her friends don't are disappointed because she's become a Muslim. Or if they do ring up, they'll ask about her in, in a disapproving voice. But they, I can tell that they're just, it's just foreign to them. La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah La ilaha illallah Muhammadur Rasulullah Whenever I come back to Tanfield, I think I'm the only hijabi in the village. Yes, and I'm glad you don't go out very much. <laughs> oh, ma'am, are you ashamed of me? Well, I'm not ashamed of you, but... Um, I can't get used to the idea of you wearing the hijab. But what is it that you're so afraid of? It's not that I'm afraid of anything, Yvonne. It's just that... After July 7 happened, you rang me up and said, get that hijab off now. Once you put on the hijab, that's it. You know, you cannot mistake you for anything else. You are a Muslim. Yeah. So you immediately propel yourself into the front lines, short sword fighting for Islam. Absolutely. There's a bit of a pressure on you, really. Yeah. Um, when I, I cycle to the hospital and back, and if I get really angry with some of the idiot buses, I caught myself sort of making some rather rude gestures, but because of where my head's got, I think, oh no, they're going to think that I'm a Muslim who makes rude gestures. Uh -huh. That's and, it, because everything that you're judged, it's not a some mad female cyclist, it's some it's mad, mad Muslim yeah. female cyclist. Yeah, mad bicyclist terrorist. Just because I put on a hijab does not mean I am a second class citizen, and I refuse to be treated like a second class citizen. I refuse to dilute my professionalism as a journalist. I refuse to bow down to anyone uh, but God. I refuse to... You would curtsy to the Queen? No, not anymore. Well, that's... <laughs> well you saw that happen when I got that award in yes, the House of Lords. Yes, and that was Lord. disgusting. Oh, Mother, this was when I met the Duke of Kent, and he went to shake my hand, and I went like that, and then I said... That was a bit too over the top. How? Well, the man, he put his hand out to shake it, and it was an insult to him for you not to shake. You shook hands with Aziz, you shook hands with Arafat. Tariq Aziz and Yasser Arafat, that was before I was a Muslim. And if you notice, I'm not even wearing a hijab. As a new convert, I just try and keep everything as simple as I possibly can. You know, I'm told that it's not Islamic to shake a man's hand, so I just no longer shake anyone's hands. One day in Mecca when I heard the Azan, and I'm still getting tingles thinking about it now, and there in front of me was this sea of other pilgrims, many different skin colours, many different nationalities. And then the first prayer began and suddenly the sister to my left, the brother to my right, we're all saying our prayers to the one God. That's when I realised we're all different, we're all diverse, and yet uh, we're all part of this one amazing family. Do you not feel anything at all for the church? I've still got, the, you know, total respect um, for Christianity, but I 
feel as though I've moved on. And I, I think that uh, Christianity is a great springboard to Islam. You should come and join us. You've just got oh, such yeah. a little it's step to make. Uh, there are so many things that you do that are very close to Islam, your lifestyle, your dress, mm. your outlook. No, I the do that in my Jeevan. I'm happy as a Christian and I was born a Christian. I was brought up as a Christian and I'm happy to be one now. I don't want to change. Arrogance. His or mine? Yours. <laughs> I still think the world about her and I still think she's got the same personality. In a way, it's a blessing because the drinking stopped, which is good. Her health is better, which is good. She stopped smoking, which can't be bad either. And that's the uh, plus side of it. And I'm eating healthier as well. Yes, you can tell as well. <laughs> and here's my favorite songwriter. Oh, gosh. <laughs> I play those regularly. Morning is broken. And Yusuf Islam now. Yusuf, yes. Well, Cat Stevens, I always call him. <laughs>